Hello everyone. Welcome to Civil Engineering and Stuff. And in today's video lecture, we are going to discuss about the basics of design of flexible payment system. Now, in this lecture, what you can expect? In this lecture, we will be discussing about the basics of the steps that are used for the design of flexible payment systems. However, though we will be, we will be discussing the steps we won't be going in technical details of each steps all right so we are not going to talk about the different provisions of the code we are not going to talk about the different permissible limits different technical terms that are involved we are not going to discuss about it we are going to be just the idea of this lecture is to give you an overview like how the flexible payment is designed okay so before i move ahead for the design for this uh, lecture for the design of flexible payment a uh, few prerequisite of this lecture is that first of all you should know what flexible payment is you should have a basic idea about the flexible payment what are the different layers of flexible payment and what are the different materials that are uh, used for the construction of flexible payment that basic idea you should have if that is uh, that idea you have then uh, you can watch the video if these basic concepts are not clear to you then you yeah i'll request that you first clear those concepts i have already prepared few videos uh, on these so you can watch those videos uh, or you can refer the uh, conventional books for these topics technical terms like uh, the vehicle damage factor equivalent single axial load all these things should be clear to you apart from that the bitterness mixes the soil separate term everything these basic things should be clear to you okay if those are clear to you then let's move ahead dive into the topic the design of flexible payment now the design of flexible payment if i want to simplify the design of flexible payment system can be bifurcated into two broad categories what are the two broad categories the first one is the material quality and mix design and the second category is the thickness design of each layer okay so the design of flexible payment can be bifurcated into two broad categories the material quality and mix design and the thickness design of the flexible payment let's discuss this now you know that the flexible payment is a multi layered structure your flexible payment is constructed in number of layers the bottom layer is called as the soil subgrade or subgrade layer then we have the subbase layer above subbase we have the base course which can again be bituminous or non bituminous and above that we have the surface cores right we have the surface cores which in general is a bituminous layer so these are the different uh, payment layer system if required in between these we can also have some uh, cement treated bases or crack relief layers if required right in between this we can have a granular granular crack relief layer the purpose of this layer is to stop the propagation of of cracks like we, we have cement treated base there's and like that that is a somewhat modified part that we are not going to touch okay so conventionally these are the layers of flexible payment now each layer have is made up of different materials so the in the first category the material quality and mix design we assess the quality of material and we do the mix design for each of the layer all right i'll again repeat each layer is made up of different materials for example let's say we have our base course a bituminous base course a bituminous base course is made up of coarse aggregate it is made up of fine aggregate it is it contain filler and binder which is bitumen in general so these materials are mixed in certain proportion 
right these materials are mixed in certain proportion to form a bituminous mix for the base cores so what should be the quality of each individual material and in what proportion each of the material should be mixed that is decided in the first category the material quality and mix design in the second category the thickness design what we do is once we have ascertained the quality of the material we are we are assured that the quality of the material is of superior and satisfy the minimum strength and durability requirement once we are assured of that and we have done the mix design we assess the thickness of each layer what we do we assess the thickness of each layer based upon the loading the residual payment system is going to carry all right so in the second category we do the thickness design all right okay so let us discuss about the first category the material quality and mixed design so in this as we have discussed we assess the quality of the material and uh, design the mix or the proportion in which the individual material should be mixed now talking about let's start with the uh, with the bottom that is the soil subgrade okay we will start with the bottom layer the soil subgrade which is which act as the found foundation layer for the other layers to be laid upon plus it tra it transfers the or distributes the load to a natural ground surface the soil subgrade is made up of your soil so definitely we need to assess the properties of soil so for that we do some geotechnical studies in which we identify the type of soil that we are dealing with so for that we do liquid limit test we do plastic limit we find out the plasticity index and then we classify the soil we classify the type of soil we are dealing with on the field and then after that we see if there is any kind of swelling in the soil that is upon the introduction of the moisture is there any volumetric change in the soil we do swelling index test, uh, test for that after that we find out the optimum moisture content in which we we can get the maximum compaction energy or the maximum dry density using modified proctor test through this we find out the omc and mdd value of the soil and then we find out the load bearing capacity of the soil with respect to the standard loading through cbr test or the california bearing ratio test through that we find out the the bearing ratio of the soil using this after doing these test if we find that the soil is of good quality if the soil is of good quality well and good we will move ahead with the uh, construction at least for the subgrade part if we find that the soil is of poor quality if we find that the soil the in situ soil is of poor quality that is let's say we are we are dealing with an expensive soil which has a high swelling potential and low cbr value so in that scenario certain treatment certain treatment to the in situ soil need to be done and in technical term this is called as the soil stabilization okay soil stabilization is a term that is used when we using some methods we improve the quality of the soil H how we improve we to the in situ soil we add either cement or lime in certain case we can also add bitumen or some chemical in certain proportion now this to find out what in how in what proportion these material any one of the material not all any one of the material need to be added to improve the quality of the soil for that again all these tests are repeated in different proportions so uh, 
if our soil is of poor quality soil stabilization stabilization is done to improve the quality of soil subgrade okay many a times uh, soil from other part may also be introduced but then again soil stabilization has to be done to improve the quality of the in situ soil so that goes for the subgrade the material quality and assessment of for the soil subgrade part above soil subgrade we have the next layer called as the sub base we have next layer called as the soil sub base and soil sub base again the role of soil sub base is that it provides the drainage facility any drainage facility that need to be need to be provided for the flexible pavement will be done in this it prevents the top layers from overstressing right and again it also provide a strong support this is the role of we, this is the role of a soil uh, sub base layer of flexible pavement and that's what we want the soil sub base to play the role that we want it to play now the sub base layer this soil sub base layer uh, the morth that is ministry of road transportation and highway suggest uh, we have like different gradations right from gradation 1 to gradation 6 of the gsb layer and your gsb layer or the granular sub base layer as we call what we call as the granular sub base layer or the gsb layer more suggest different gradations for this layer and uh, this gsb layer is a it is a mixture of big boulders plus coarse aggregate and a small amount of fine aggregates along with soil if required it is a combination combination of these now moth itself suggest that uh, we can use uh, these different type of gradation depending of, depending upon the uh, case or scenarios uh, that are there in this sites and the aggregates the aggregates that we are using should satisfy certain physical parameters for example let's say aggregate impact value should not be greater than 40 the liquid limit should not of the soil that we are using should not be greater than 25 the plasticity index should not be greater than 6 and upon satisfying with the aggregate property we prepare the gsb mix we prepare the gsb mix that is the any one of the gradation that we select and then we perform a cvr test and the cvr value should be greater than or equal to 30% all right cvr value should be greater or equal to 30% so once we are satisfied our uh, our gsb is giving a satisfying the aggregate is satisfying the property and, and we are getting the minimum cvr value then well and good the material quality for that we have for gsb material is also up to the par as per the code provision so we are satisfied with that then the third layer is the base cores now the base cores can be non bituminous or bituminous depending upon the type of uh, flexible pavement system we are constructing so if you are if you are having a non bituminous we have we have wmm and wbm mixes water bond mixes and wet mix macadam and if we are uh, if it is a bituminous layer then it is made up of dense bituminous macadam bituminous concrete it can also have bituminous macadam in case we are going for low volume roads so these are the uh, different mixes for which we have to work upon so suppose suppose we are looking for bituminous mixes we are the top layer of the base course is 
made up of bituminous mixes. Now, one more thing uh, here bituminous cores and surface cores I'm discussing together because uh, on and all mixes remain same, like uh, the testing parameters remains same. So, above uh, like the base cores may be made up of let's say DB mix and the surface cores may be made up of BC mix. All right, and for both the aggregate as well as the mix test procedure as well as mixed design procedure is same. The only difference is the quality of the material that we are using. These mixes are again made with a combination of certain proportion of coarse aggregate, certain proportion of fine aggregate, certain proportion of filler if required and binder. Binder which is bitumen. Right, binder which is bitumen. Now, first of all, since it is a combination of various materials, so first of all, quality of each of the material is identified. That is, the aggregate impact value of the coarse aggregate, Los Angeles value, the water absorption value, water absorption value, the specific gravity for the coarse aggregate. Is identified like for, so for fillers also the specific gravity, uh, this gradation of each batch of aggregate is done. Same goes for the filler material. So, first of all, the individual quality of each of the material is identified. Just like GSB, certain permissible value for each uh, for DBM and BC mixes will be there. If the code is, if uh, our material is satisfying the aggregate, the batch of aggregate is satisfying those properties, then what we will do is, if the properties are being satisfied, then we will do a mixed design. Then we will do a mixed design. If these are failing, let's say the aggregate impact value and loss this value is lesser than what the code. Uh, specifies then we will reject that batch of aggregate and we will choose some other batch of material right so at first we have to ascertain that each of the aggregate each of the batch of aggregate or and the material that we are getting that should satisfy the the minimum quality that the code specifies same goes for the binder also right we have different uh, variety of binder let's say VG30 we are using then again uh, this VG30 should satisfy the flash and fire point the softening point the ductility uh, value right the viscosity value all these things the the specific bitumen that we are using should satisfy once everything is satisfied that is all these things are satisfied then we have to mix these materials in a specific proportion so as to get a dense strong and durable mix so for that we do the mix design now for, to do the mix design to form the gradation so we have to from form the grade, gradation now the code have let's say bc dbm each of these mixes the, the uh, morth and irc37 specifies certain gradation for each of the mixes for example here we are showing the gradation for bituminous concrete mix now you can see in this gradation we are given the normal size of aggregate if the normal size of aggregate is 19 mm this gradation need to be followed if the normal size of aggregate is 13.2 this gradation gradation 2 has to be followed now here you can see that we are given different size of aggregate different size of aggregates and the permissible limit of the percentage passing from each sieve we are given the sieve size here and what should be the percentage passing with respect to the each sieve size and then the minimum binder content for each 
mix grade 1 grade 2 what should be the minimum minimum quantity of binder that should be there by the total mass of the mix so for that we do the mix design and for that first of all the gradation need to be achieved how do we achieve this gradation so to achieve this gradation what we do is we do we can use any method trial method can be used in which uh, what we have actually is the different batch of aggregate so let's say we have one batch of aggregate as 20 mm another batch of aggregate 10 mm 6 mm then we can have stone dust stone dust so first of all the individual gradation is done and then we do different trials by which we combine these material let's say 10 percent if you are going for a 1200 grams of uh, sample or uh, then uh, 20 percent of these 10 percent of these uh, 70 per, uh, 60 percent of these 10 percent of these and like that we combine these material these batch of aggregate that we have in different proportion to eventually get the desired gradation this is the desired gradation that we want to get so after uh, once we have done the hit and trial approach and we have got the desired gradation then then the next step is to find out the optimum binder content so definitely each of the bcmix are given with the a minimum amount of binder so for that we go for the marshall we go for marshall mix design method marshall mix design method and in this method basically first of all we find out the optimum binder content by making the mix in with different binder value and then after that we do the uh, we find out the obc and uh, find out the marshall stability value marshall stability value and flow value at obc i have prepared a detailed lecture regarding these mixes and the marshall testing and the different aggregate properties so if you are interested in watching those uh, you can uh, you can watch those videos using the link that are given in description box or in the cue cards as well as in the comment section okay so there is certain uh, certain value that need to be fulfilled for example the marshall stability for a hot climate should be in uh, 12 kN marshall flow value 2.5 to 4 marshall coefficient 2.5 to 5 the air voids in the mix 3 to 5 the wav value 65 to 75 the tensile strength ratio it 80 percent and like that so once we have prepared a mixture at obc it should satisfy these these parameters and if these parameters are being satisfied then we are good for our base as well as surface cores so that is that combines to form your first first category of first category of mix design okay so we have this is how at first the quality of the material and mix design is done then once we are uh, done well, like we ascertain the quality of the material and we do the mix design we look for the thickness of each of uh, of each layer so to find out the thickness the prerequisite to find out the thickness is the cumulative single axial load the vehicle damage factor the lifespan of the pavement the percentage traffic current and after the completion of project after the completion of of project and the rate of increase of traffic okay so you using this we find out the total load total cumulative axial load that our payment is going to carry once we are we ascertain the the load that our payment is going to carry then based upon that 
we go for the selection of thickness of each layer thickness of each layer we go for the selection of thickness of each layer now for uh, for deciding the thickness of each layer first of all we all uh, we do selection of trial composition we do selection of trial composition now in selection of trial composition based upon the functional requirement based upon the functional requirement of the flexible payment we choose the different layers like if we want to add uh, a cement treated base course if we want to add cement treated granular sub base course if there is any crack relief semi layer need to be provided and like that so based upon the functional requirement we select the trial composition and after that after that the bituminous mix design what kind of mixes we are going to use that is decided and the resilient modulus is assessed right and this again is found we have already found in this step one right uh, there are uh, tests that are done to to find out all these things after we are uh, ascertained with these parameters that is the selection of trial composition and the type of mixes and their resident modulus value we go for the the selection of the thickness of each layer selection of thickness of each layer the thickness is is assumed based upon the designer's experience based upon the designer's experience and the minimum thickness guidance the minimum thickness guidance by the irc code so based upon the design, uh, designer's thickness uh, designer's experience a uh, thickness of a layer based upon the based upon the total load that a traffic or the payment is going to carry a uh, thickness is assumed or we can use the catalog provided by the is code or irc code there is number of catalog that is given in irc code an example of which is seen here we have the different amount of traffic in msa traffic in msa and based upon the effective cbr that we are getting so if you have if you have a cbr of 8% we can have a cbr of effective cbr of 9% and the type of layer that we are going to type of layers and the material we are using if we are using cement treated sub base and along with this we are using emulsion foam bitumen wrap if we are using likewise likewise if an semi layer with a cbr of 15% along with cement treated base cement treated sub base we are using likewise different combinations of uh, material layer of materials we are using and the effective cbr value that we are using any catalog can be referred so let's say let's say we are we have an effective cbr of 8% and there is a there is a crack resisting layer semi layer and our base as well as the sub base is cemented to improve the quality of the base layer and to improve the quality of sub base layer if that is the overall scenario and our effective cbr that is coming is 8% and our traffic is 20 msa then you can see we have a guideline of the thickness that we have to adopt so the thickness of cemented sub base has to be 20 mm for cemented base it should be 150 mm for binder course that is your dbm layer should be 50 mm and the surface course your bc layer can be of 30 mm right likewise we have different combinations that are given to us 
All right, you can see like if we are giving a granular cracklist layer and cemented to subbase, cemented to base with a CBR of effective CBR of 10%. Effective is very important. Okay, so effective CBR, the difference between effective CBR and CBR, I'm going to discuss in detail. And as and when I'm going to discuss, I'm going to put the link in the description box. You can watch there. Okay, so like this, uh, a thickness is assumed. So once we have, once we have assumed a thickness as per the IRC code, once we have assumed a thickness as per the IS code, the next step, the next step is to assess the relevance of these layers or the layer thickness. That is, if this thickness of the layer is suitable or not. So for that, what we do is we do the structural analysis. We do structural analysis using the layers that we have assumed. Okay, we, ha we have assumed the thickness of each layer and then we do a structural analysis based up of the flexible payment system with the desired thickness. Now, how do we do this structural analysis? For this, we have a software called as IIT PAVE. We have a software called as IIT PAVE. In this IIT PAVE, certain inputs are given. Input are the layer thickness, the number of layers and the layer thickness that we have adopted, Poisson's ratio, the standard axial load, standard axial load, our tire contact pressure, the resident modulus if required. So all these data are input into this IIT PAVE software and based upon the input, we receive certain output. We receive certain output in terms of stress, strain and deformation. We receive certain output in terms of stress, strain and deformation. Now the, the code has suggested some certain uh, fatigue and rating uh, equations and based upon that we find out the allowable we find out the allowable stress and strain value again like i said in the start of the video i'm not going to get into the detail like how we are going to find these uh, values right just understand that we uh, the input values are the input values are these and we have uh, an output value and then we compare these output stress strain value with the allowable stress strain value. If the output value is less than or equal to the allowable value, then everything is okay. If not, if not, then we have to reassume the thickness. Then we have to reassume the thickness. And that's how the thickness of the uh, this, uh, of each layer of the flexible payment is done. All right, so there are a number of iterations uh, that goes towards the design of the thickness for the uh, for the flexible payment. Okay, so broad on and all, this is how the thickness is decided. Okay, like I said, I have not gone into details about these uh, thickness design. What are the small small details related to that? I will prepare a detailed video lecture uh, for this uh, thickness design and as and when I, I prepare that, I will attach a link uh, at the comment section as well as in the description box as well as in the cue card. Okay, so at that point of time, you can watch the video for that. All right, so uh, that is how the design of flexible payment uh, system is, is done. Okay, so I hope through this video lecture, uh, the concept of design of of flexible payment system is clear to you. Okay, this is just an overview how this is done. I, and uh, you got an idea how uh, the design of flexible payment system is done. Uh, I hope uh, the lecture was useful to you. Uh, if so, uh, consider liking the video, share your views in the comment section, 
and uh, subscribe to the channel for more videos like this thank you for watching have a nice day